Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that's above every other name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. Because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, we have our being. And we continue on in this paradigm, in this construct. There is no time, because all time is happening all the time. Uh, modern physics is starting to catch up to the spiritual reality and the spiritual truth. We've been waiting for these guys for ages to start to catch up with what's actually real. Um, the pursuit of true science uh, is the pursuit of truth and actual reality. And in the process of looking into actual reality, people start finding out that the scriptures and the scriptural reality is actually true. So when God says, I am, there is truth in that. All time is happening all the time. Now, as we continue on and uh, the construct continues to change and to shift, because we're experiencing a certain window of what we call and consider time, we're experiencing a certain window as we um, move forward, as we go through certain sets of experiences and God's purposes are being manifest. So sometimes when you may be, um, you may be having a, a, a difficult experience or a difficult circumstance, just remember that that is only what you're experiencing right then and there. <clears throat> because in a moment, things can change. In a moment, you can be in a totally different space, in a totally different experience, in a totally different way of relating to the exact same thing. You know, I, I've, I've kind of begun to understand this more and more. I mean, you can have, and I, I use an example of, the, of surfing in the ocean just because I've spent part of my life living close to the ocean, but you can have a wave crashing, <clears throat> and one person could be in the place where the wave is crashing down on them and be in great peril. Somebody else could be riding that wave. Somebody else could be beyond the break of the wave and they could just be out at sea just bobbing around, not experiencing anything. And you can have somebody on the coastline watching that whole thing happen and take place. And that person's experience is just like, oh wow, look at this beautiful wave and this all this power. It's all the same thing that's happening at a certain time but everybody's having a different experience because of where they are in relationship to what's taking place so now um, I want to share something with you all that is going to help you in your experience of what you're going through right now because I know okay so we are followers of Christ here the people that listen to this show predominantly um, but people that are here, Jesus Christ is truth. So he's the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're if you're looking for truth, you're going to find Jesus. And if you follow Jesus, then you can also recognize truth wherever it is and whatever form it comes from, even if it's not um, something that comes through your approved of religious channels. Hello. Yes. Uh, you, so, okay. So, a precept that you will find in, for example, in Buddhism. They will talk about all life is suffering. And you find that also in the scriptures where Jesus said, In this life you will, um, you will experience tribulation, you'll experience trial, you'll experience, you know, in this life you'll have trouble. But take heart, for I've overcome the world. John 16. In this life you'll have trouble. All right? Okay. All life is suffering. Fine. Good. We found we found something that <laughs> people seem to understand. There's truth there. Okay. Well, here's something that can help. Um, you and I, part of... of, of the, okay, the kingdom is within, right? John 17. Or not John 17, Luke 17. Luke 17. Where's the kingdom? The kingdom is within. So, in order for you 
to experience the rule and reign of Christ, that's something that's going to take place within you. And so many people keep looking for an external manifestation. They were doing that even in Jesus' day. They kept looking for the external manifestation, the external, external, external. Is it at this time, Jesus, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? At this time, Jesus, are you going to put down the Roman occupation? Lord Jesus, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this outside, external? Let's make you king. Let's, let's let, you know, you fed the 5,000. We've seen an external manifestation. Come on, let's keep it going. No, the kingdom is within. And so what we need for to be able to walk this thing out is we need the manifestation of the kingdom within. Okay. All right, so let's talk about what are some things that are good manifestations of the kingdom within. Okay, love not the world or the things of the world. For if a man loves the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So let's talk about a principle that is something that is somewhat universally understood, which is a principle of detachment. You know, one thing that causes so much suffering for people is their attachment to things in the world and things in life. Attachment to relationships, attachment to experiences, attachments to points in time, attachments to traumas, attachments to, to good things, to a house, to a car, to something material, to attachment to a way that things should be, attachment to an idea, attachment to a precept, attachment to a hope and a dream of what you wanted. Suffering. Suffering. You know what comes with attachment? Suffering. It's a nice big shackle that's on there. All life is suffering. Because all attachment is suffering. What happens when you die to the world? Well, you detach from the world. <clears throat> to live is Christ and to die is gain. So when you are detached from the world, when you die to the world, you detach from the world. Now, does that mean that we don't... We, we do all things as under Christ. So, you can go in and you can put in an amazing effort. You can go in and you can do all things as unto Christ. And so, therefore, you can go in and do incredible things, incredible exploits. But you're not attached to the outcome. You're not attached to the... to You, you don't need the significance. You don't need the pat on the back because you do it as unto God. Listen, if you can make this shift within, it is going to make a massive difference in your experience and your reduction in suffering while you're here. Now, this is, this is, uh, this is something that is a work of the Holy Spirit within us. But if you can let go, detachment even from the good things. This doesn't mean that you're cold. This doesn't mean that you're callous. But when you can let those things go, when you can let go of these own ideas, these own false constructs, you know, the, the religious programming is incredibly damaging because it can give you all of these things, these ideas that you end up attaching to and then when they don't come through, when this form of godliness that denies the power thereof doesn't manifest in the way that they told you it should, it will cause suffering. Hello. Yes, it will cause suffering. And you know how many of you have suffered under the yoke of religious programming. Religious programming has caused tremendous suffering because of your attachment to those ideas. Your attachment to those ideals that were programmed into you, this form of godliness that denies the power thereof, has caused tremendous suffering in people's lives. Just look how many of them are at peace. How many of them have joy? How many of them can exist away from the collective for two weeks? No, they got to get back. They got to get back. They got to show up. Week to week, right? The, the mantra of the Pentecostal movement was come to the meeting. 
Jesus says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations. They say, come to the meeting. Come to the building and sit down here and wait. Whereas God says, go. God says, trust me. God says, follow me. God says, listen to my voice. Don't follow another. Those who are led by the Spirit, those are the true sons and daughters of the living God. How are you going to be led by the Spirit? Well, you got to let go. When Jesus walked through and he told people, come and follow me, what did they have to do? Detach. If you're at the tax collector booth, detach from it and come and follow me. If you've got your fishing boat and your fishing nets and Jesus says, come follow me, detach from it. James and John had to leave their father in order to walk with Christ. How long do you think that conversation took? All right, here's Jesus. He's called us. We got to go. You, there was somebody else that Jesus did the same thing with and he said, come and follow me. That guy said, um, let me go bury my father. You know, let me take care of my family obligations. Jesus said, that guy's not fit for the kingdom. You can't look back. James and John, they didn't do that. Dad, we love you. We've got to go. The master's calling. We got to go. Truth is calling. We got to go. We love you, but we got to go. We wish the best for you. We want, we want nothing but wonderful things for you, Dad. But we got to go. Because the one that made it all, we bow before him and we got to go. And what did Jesus say? Unless you, you know, you can't, unless you hate your father, mother, brother, sister, life in this world, etc., etc., basically, you can't have anything ahead of him. So you detach from everything in this life and you are engrafted into the vine, which is Christ. You're emptied out and you're filled by the Spirit. Okay, um, one more thing that goes along with that, and this is just a personal, personal way that I do some of this stuff, is also learning to compartmentalize things. Uh, now, this is just a tactic, all right, to support you in detachment. Compartmentalize. Now, this is very, very, very different than people that have been split, <laughs> okay? There's a lot of people that have been split, um, in themselves, you know, through trauma and through all that kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. Compartmentalization is, and this is a way of just addressing the things that are there in front of you, but when you can compartmentalize um, for whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that you need to do, because there are, there are things that need to be done, works that need to be addressed, uh, projects that you need to take up, um, challenges maybe within your own family that you need to look at. And if you can keep each thing in its own lane and deal with it accordingly and don't let everything go into one big messy soup that paralyzes you, if you can compartmentalize, it will help you tremendously in being able to be effective in the things that need to be done that are in specific, specific lanes of your life. Because sometimes what can happen is we can go through a trauma or we can go through a difficult time and everything gets shut down because one thing is just absolute chaos. So this is a little bit on the art of life for you because as we go forward and as things sort of begin to escalate around us and as men's hearts fail them because of the things that they see coming upon the earth, you're going to need to know how to deal with and address the challenges of this life and do the things that come in front of you. And some of it's going to be mundane, routine, day-to-day -day things. And some of it is going to be um, massive, life-changing, earth-shattering things. Whatever it is, you, just, you need to be able to do that work that God gives you. So, in doing the work that God gives you... Um, what 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 is going to help you is being able to 
keep each thing in its own lane, compartmentalize it so that you can address things as they come. And so wherever you are, you're present in that. So right now, uh, I'm, you know, the rain's going and uh, we're doing this podcast and this is what we're doing. And as soon as this goes off and it goes up and it goes out, um, I'm on to the next thing that God's got for me. And I thank God that we've been able to have these windows and share the word and do this kind of thing. And I thank God that, that, you know, in the middle of all the other things that have been going on in the reality that he's had me in the middle of, I can still, by his design, be able to put out a word and share it with you. And that word can support and bless the people that it's supposed to get to. So, you know, but carry on. You know, carry on. So right now, you get the word. Figure it out. Put it. Put, put whatever it is that's going to help you apply it and keep going. Because these are things that will help you. So, application. That's one last thing I'm going to leave you guys with today, which is knowledge without application is worthless. All right? This is one thing I've said for a long time to people that are close with me, especially in working situations. You can know, but if you don't apply it, it doesn't do you any good. So knowledge without application is worthless. So you can have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but if you don't apply it, it doesn't serve you. It doesn't help anybody. So application is very, very important. And the greater the degree to which you apply the truth, the better the benefit is of your that comes into your life and into your human experience. So apply. So right now, as you as we wrap up for today, um, take what it is that's there and look at it and say, how can you apply this? How can you apply? How can you detach from these things that have been just destroying you and causing so much suffering in your life? How can you detach? How can you um, let those things go? And then also attach to what it is that God is doing in His Spirit. And attach to the way that, that the Spirit of God is leading and guiding you and flowing through you. Alright? So, with that, we love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you. Uh, thank you guys for sharing these with other people. Share these with people that need them, all right? Don't just um, don't just listen, but you know some people that sometimes need the word. And uh, I would suggest and recommend share the word because it's freely we receive, freely we give. So put it out there, and God bless you. We love you. We'll talk to you again sometime soon. All right, God bless you. Bye.